Hi, my name is Caroline. I sew and blog over at SewCanShe.com and I'm really excited to be here with you today to show you a project that I designed for our dogs. We are a dog loving family and I, am, I was so excited when I realized that I could make accessories for our dogs, including this really fun and scrappy dog leash uh, with materials that I already had, including fun little clasps that are easy to find. The metal comes in lots of different colors and styles, which I can accessorize and I can make a matching little collar too. And then um, this project over here is called a cage comforter and it can be a donation item for your local animal shelter or you could just make them to make a new little bed for your own pet. So let's get started first with the leash. This leash is 5 eighths of an inch wide the way I made it here and it is 7 feet long. Well, six feet long. The leash is six feet long. So what I need to start with is I'm going to start with two and a half inch strips and you can cut them any length that you want as long as they're all the same two and a half inches wide. And then you wanna cut enough strips so that when you sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance until you have enough for a seven foot long strip. And of course this can be adjustable if you feel like you need a longer or a shorter dog leash. Now by itself, this will be kind of flimsy and not very strong. So I like to use a stabilizer, a fusible interfacing, and I just fuse it to the back of my strip that's already sewn together. You see here with the seams pressed open. And it's important to help with your sewing, to help everything look nice and professional, to leave a half inch at either end of the strip that does not have stabilizer or doesn't have interfacing. And you see here one tip for interfacing that I would like to share with you is you don't have to cut a seven foot long strip of interfacing. You can cut smaller strips, you can use up interfacing scraps and when you fuse them together, just overlap them a little bit. And so you just cut your interfacing, fuse it on until it's all interfaced except for half inch at either end. And I'd like to note here that this is a fusible woven interfacing. If you have a fusible non-woven interfacing, that's just fine too. You can use whatever you have and just kind of customize it to your pup. So here I have a strip that I already sewed my seven feet long of, inner, of, of leash and I added my interfacing and then I pressed it. And this is how I pressed it. First, I folded the strip in half and pressed it. And then I folded the edges almost to the center and I pressed it. And then I folded it over one more time and pressed it. And you see here that it's about 5 eighths of an inch wide, which for us, for our little dog, is the perfect width. So now I'm going to show you, we're going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to show you a trick for sewing the ends and making them look nice and neat. I'm going to take my, see here how the interfacing is, stops a half an inch before the edge. And I'm gonna unfold the pressing that I did previously and I'm gonna fold it back on itself. So here I'm just gonna stitch and I'm going to use this line of interfacing as my guide to sew with a half inch seam allowance. So. I'll backstitch. All right, so with that seam sewn, it's a little bit fidgety, but you can just kind of first push out this corner and make that look nice. You see I have a little turning tool here to help me. And then with my thumbs, I'll kind of open the seam and fold it all inside. And now I have a beautiful end of the strap and no, none of the raw edges are showing because of the way that I folded it, that little trick. Now at this point, it's time to top stitch. And so I have this sewing machine set up with some heavy duty thread and it's at a stitch length of about three, which is a little bit longer than usual, but I like that. I think it's pretty for top stitching. The top stitching is 
approximately one eighth of an inch from the edge and it's just all the way around in a big long circle. And you see here, using the walking foot on the sewing machine, it really helps everything go smoothly and it helps prevent rippling. It's really the easiest way to sew this strap. Now when you get to the end, here's my pretty corner. I'm just gonna sew to here, pivot with the needle down, here pivot and back up the other side. A tool that can help so you don't sew your finger is a stiletto like this. It just helps me have more control. Okay, I'll pivot with the needle down. And then all the way down the other side. So you'll just continue sewing all the way around your strap till you get back to the place where you started. I have one that's sewn to that point right over here. So this strap is exactly like the other one. It just has the top stitching all finished. Next, I'm going to make the handle and add this cute little clip. So for the handle, you just fold the handle over about seven or eight inches, something that will be comfortable for your wrist. And then I'm going to sew a little square of stitching right here to secure it to the end. Now here's a tip. You having the walking foot again is very helpful. And just decide which way looks nicer. I think this way looks nicer. Now, instead of starting to sew like this horizontally, I have found that my fabric, my strap slips a lot when I do that. And so it's easier to sew like this. So I'm just going to sew a nice little square. Again, pivoting, and I'm just sewing right on top of the top stitching that I had before. And I'll back stitch. Now that's the handle. Now, of course, I would trim the threads there. Now on the other end, you wanna add your little clip. These clips are fun to sew. Just add it on. Now, one little tip. I'm gonna fold it over a nice generous amount so that this bulky part right here doesn't get in the way of my sewing machine foot. Um, so we're just gonna sew this on with a little square the same way. Okay. And the cute little dog leash is done. So to make your coordinating cage comforter or dog bed, I'm gonna walk you through the steps. So this is very, very easy. You will start with two fabrics. Okay, about 15 by 20 inches are good or whatever your shelter likes and place your two fabrics. These are coordinating fabrics again from the same collection. Place them right sides together and sew around three sides just like a pillowcase. And then you'll clip the corners to make turning easy. And one trick I like to do is I like to press the, out the raw edge to the inside uh, before I turn it right side out. So this will help me if I press it press it over a half inch first. And then I'll turn it right side out 
and place a scrap of batting on the inside. This is some ultra high loft batting that will make a nice cushy dog bed, but really the shelters will take anything. You can use uh, thin cotton batting, whatever you have left over. So you'll place the batting, smooth it all out on the inside, and then you will just, with it all, just tuck it inside. And just to make this easy on myself, I'll pin these edges. So I'll pin all along here, and then I will sew it again with an eighth, eighth inch to an eighth of an inch away from the edge, just like you did the dog leash. So you'll sew this. And then one fun thing that I like to add is I like to add some quilting. So again, using the walking foot, I just quilt a little bit around the bed to help everything hold together and look great.